Well, a new law in Scotland against so-called hate speech went into effect earlier this week. The measure makes it illegal to stir up hatred based on age, disability, religion, sexual orientation, or transgender identity. While some are applauding its implementation, others are criticizing it, saying that it infringes upon free speech and religious liberty. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of Scotland has also been critical of the law known as the Hate Crime and Public Order Act. In a statement, the Bishops' Conference wrote, quote, there should be no threat of prosecution for expressing the belief that, for example, there are only two sexes or genders, that a man cannot become a woman and vice versa, or that marriage can only be between one man and one woman. And here to talk to us more about this new law that really has stirred up a lot of controversy is Lois McClatchy Miller. She's a Scottish commentator and senior legal communications officer for Alliance Defending Freedom UK. She joins us now from London. Lois, thank you so much for your time today. I know you yourself are Scottish. So what are your thoughts on this new law in your home country? I understand the legislation was actually passed three years ago, but just went into effect on Monday. That's right. Well, nobody likes to be hated. And as Christians, we're called to love our neighbors. So it seems on the face of it like a good law. But unfortunately, this law is so vague that it bans something, a new offense called stirring up of hate. And that is very vaguely and and unclearly defined. We don't know what that really means. And what that allows is for the government to define this speech that they don't like and say that that is a criminal offence. That's a huge concern uh, for a number of people, for comedians, for feminists, and of course, for Christians who often speak truth in a society where that's not always the popular choice. Yeah, and Lois, I know someone who is a big critic of this law is J.K. Rowling, the author of Harry yeah. Potter. I mean, she has been very vocal about her views on transgenderism, especially on social media. Tell us what happened recently with her and one of her posts on X as it relates to this new law. That's right. Well, J.K. Rowling is well known for her feminist tweets uh, standing up for biological reality. And she challenged uh, the police on the 1st of April when the law came into place. She challenged the police to arrest her, uh, having expressed her beliefs um, about uh, the trans issues and the trans movement. Um, the police uh, reviewed her tweets, they investigated them, uh, and yesterday, after the investigation, they concluded that she had not committed a hate crime. Now, this is good news because she was clearly testing the limits of the law straight out the gate. She took a very bold stance, and she uh, clarified that her exact tweet on that day uh, was not a criminal offence. However, uh, there is still room to be concerned uh, the law uh, does not set any parameters, like I said, around the kind of speech that is banned. So we know that J.K. Rowling's tweets uh, are fine uh, to be tweeted, but we don't know exactly about every other belief uh, or every other expression in every other context. So Scots like myself are still very confused, very concerned uh, about being able to have these important conversations in society. And the law even extends offline as well, even as far as going into family homes. Uh, if parents were to discuss issues about gender uh, or marriage, say uh, around the dinner table and, and, and children thought this was hateful or were taught that this was hateful in another context and reported their parents, uh, they could get into trouble uh, for having committed a hate speech offence. And of course, the uh, penalty for this law is very severe. It's up to seven years in prison. Hmm. I mean, this is scary stuff here. And in the meantime, there have been over 3,000 reports of, of hate just within 48 hours of this law being enacted. I mean, that is just astounding, Lois. Uh, you know, if police have to investigate every single case, what type of impact is this going to have on their resources in dealing with other crimes, say, you know, things like murder or theft? It's a huge pressure on our forces. And in fact, only last month, Police Scotland declared that they would no longer be investigating over 20,000 other crimes because they simply don't have the resources to do so. And yet we're told with this new law, they will be investigating every single report made. Bear in mind, that's 3,000 just in the last two days. Uh, so the pressure on our forces is immense. The pressure on our, our society is immense. And of course, uh, as we expected, many people are uh, giving vexatious complaints about, you know, things that he said, she said, things that people don't like, uh, the views that were aired uh, that people disagreed with. Uh, and that is, you know, it, it's very akin to of old when we had things like blasphemy laws in place in our society. It was 1697 when the last time in Scotland that somebody uh, was condemned for going against the Christian faith 
in that day. And of course, that was wrong. We look back now and we don't think anyone should have been condemned for just challenging the dominant views of the day. But but now we've got in a kind of reverse blasphemy law. And those who go against the popular narrative or the popular views of the 21st century can find themselves liable to penalty. Yeah, we're almost out of time, but I quickly want to get to this. You know, we mentioned that the Catholic bishops of Scotland are also uh, critical of this law and are concerned how it's going to impact Christians. Lois, you know, under this law, could the faithful face jail time simply for stating what we know to be true, that there are only two sexes, male and female? We simply do not know the limits of this law. We can be encouraged uh, by the result that J.K. Rowling won for feminists on this issue, but we don't know how this is going to be applied in everyday context, especially when the eyes of the world are not watching one of our most famous Scottish celebrities. So we don't know, but we are always uh, encouraged uh, in Scripture to speak in grace and truth. We always have been and we always must uh, upkeep that standard of speaking in compassion, but pointing uh, to what is true and right, no matter what the laws of our country say. Absolutely. Lois, thank you so much for your insights. We appreciate it. God bless. Thank you so much.